Here are some example calculations for Coulomb's law. In this video, we will be following the steps outlined by Deborah Cutts in Physics for Scientists and Engineers. In the first example, we have two positive charges and we need to find the force on one by the other. We start by reading the problem. For Coulomb's law problems, you need to know the charges, the distances, and the geometry. We draw in the forces on the target charge and set up the coordinate system. We need to set up Coulomb's law for each charge acting on the target. In this case, there is only one force on charge 2 by charge 1. We will now abbreviate this as just force 1. We calculate the magnitude of the Coulomb force on the charge. We then calculate the components of this force along the coordinate axes. In this case, the calculation is simple because force 1 only has a component in the positive x direction. We sum up the forces by component. Again, this is simple in this example as there is only one force. We convert back to polar coordinates using the Pythagorean theorem and the inverse tangent function. Finally, we reread the problem and check that the direction and magnitude of the force are sensible. In the second example, we have three charges. We need to find out the force on the third charge by the first two. We read the problem looking for clues on charge, distance, and geometry. We also take note of what the question is asking for. We draw in the forces on the target by each of the other charges. Keep in mind that like charges repel and opposite charges attract. In this case, the force on 3 by 1 is repulsive. 
the force on 3 by 2 is attractive. Don't forget to set up the coordinate system. Set up Coulomb's law for each of the forces. Make sure to take note of exactly which variables are involved for each. Calculate the magnitude of each force. Calculate the components for each force. For force 1, this is simple, but for force 2, we need to calculate the geometry. When expressing the components, make sure to refer to your diagram in terms of direction, making sure that you know which components may be negative. You are now ready to sum up the forces by component. Convert back to polar coordinates. Be sure to, once again, refer back to your diagram and the coordinate axis to check the quadrant for the angle. As always, reread the problem and check that the final answer is sensible in both magnitude and direction.